it going everybody, I'm Lewis and we've got some new raid tweaks and quality of life updates from the old school RuneScape team. So let's start off by having a look at the raid rewards changes. Starting off with the Twisted Bow. The Twisted Bow now has a cap on the maximum damage buff it can get from a target's magic level. This means it's going to be more in line with the DPS they intended it to have than what it did have. The buff will now max out against a target with level 250 magic. However, what they aren't changing here is its accuracy. The accuracy is going to remain the same, and I guess we'll just see how that goes. Next, the Kodai Wand, and this is something they polled but had missed on the original couple of updates. The Kodai Wand now has a 15% chance of negating rune costs on offensive spells, which should make it a lot easier for people that want to use things like Barrage, or Ice Barrage, because they have negated rune costs, and they have unlimited water runes. The last reward change is to the Ancestral Robes, it's just a minor change. Ancestral robes can now be combined into a set at the Grand Exchange to help you buy and sell them. Next, the raid tweaks. Scavenge runs are now a little bit beefier, but have two drops per kill instead of one. The raid storage chests now have a new option allowing you to deposit items into a private store. The private store accepts most equipable items or tradable items, as well as raid specific things with a capacity of 30, 60 or 90 slots depending on its tier. You can still retrieve items from the private store after leaving your raiding dungeon. There's a storage chest in the bank tent for this purpose. And the private store must be emptied before you re-enter the chambers of Zeric, so you can't use it to transfer items between raids and stock up a lot of items before you go into a new raid. The Dragon War Hammer now works as a construction hammer within raids, which is completely ridiculous. Think about it, we don't have any other war hammers working as hammers in, well, construction. I don't know whether they did it for raids, but I assume not, because they're only changing it for the Dragon War Hammer now, two weeks later. So why the hell are they doing that? They've tweaked the colours of the seeds within raids, and the vanguard will now have a chance to drop potions upon being defeated. And finally, we've got the other news this week. The XP given for Dragon Claw special attack is now given correctly. Now I don't really know exactly what that change involves, however I've got a feeling they're just making it a lot easier for players to rush with Dragon Claws, which is something I'm not a fan of. There are now more broken light bulbs in Dorgesh Khan at any time. Raids are now available in Permanent Deadman World 345. PvP is not permitted in there, but a player cannot enter while schooled. I'd say that's fairly reasonable because players might want to get the rewards from raids. However, I don't like the idea of being able to hide in raids all the time. And I don't like the idea of removing PvP in such a pvp oriented game mode. Perhaps they should just make it so you can only do solo raids, but looks like they're not going to allow that. Last week's change to Smite now applies to the Ancient Mace 2 to make it disable the player's prayer correctly when they reach zero prayer points, meaning that they can no longer use Protect Item in a situation where they shouldn't be able to use Protect Item. The Pimog Crown now takes priority over the Iron Man symbol. Many NPCs that you would expect to drop the Champion's Challenge Scrolls but didn't now do. That might be quite interesting, you might see more of an influx of Challenge Scrolls coming into the game. I know they discussed polling that update a while back, and that's actually kind of annoying me that they haven't, but it is a nice update that I'm sure we would have voted yes to. The click zone of potions in raids has now been increased. You should now find them easier to pick up. You can now cross the flat stone in Mountain Daughter using any plank from both directions. The Hopeless Creature and the Soul's Bane quest has had its attack animation improved. I don't necessarily know what was wrong with that. I kind of feel that they shouldn't really be touching up those quests because they seemed fair when we had old school RuneScape. Why are they changing them now? Iron Men now have separate stocks of food in the Cullen Romancer's chest. A render issue while wearing some of the 2015 holiday items has been addressed. And the fight with the Temple Guardian during Priest's Peril is now instanced. We should hopefully mean if multiple people are trying to do that quest they'll be able to do it a lot faster. This week feels rather strange, I kind of feel like they're doing a lot of small fixes to the game that didn't necessarily need to be fixed. For example the fight with the Temple Guardian during Priest's Peril. There's not a lot of people doing that quest. And even if they were, it's just how the game is. It's 2007 Scape, not RuneScape 3. I kind of feel that, in fact, this week, it's kind of been a bit of an unpolled, easy scape week, and it's really unacceptable for the old school RuneScape team to be doing that. This is meant to be a community-based game. All the updates are meant to come in, both of them by us, the community, and they're not doing that, and it's insulting to the community base. If you want to discuss any of the changes, please do so on the forums or in my comments below. If you want to watch my video on the latest old school RuneScape developer blog, please click here for the Dead Man Overall. And if you want to watch my video on the developer block before that, please click here for the poll system. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and share, and if you want to keep up to date with the old school rules, Google updates, their blocks, and polls, please subscribe. I've been Lewis, thanks for watching, goodbye.